Hi, and welcome to part 3 of your 6th iOS programming tutorial, where we have been looking at making a basic web browser. Let me quickly recap on what we've done in the past two parts of this tutorial. In part 1, we loaded up a web page that we set using a string, and then we made it interactive so that we could zoom in and out, just by changing a few properties in the storyboard. Then in part 2, we added this navigation bar, whereby the user can enter the text that the text of the URL that they wish to visit, i.e. they could type http colon forward slash forward slash www.google.com, press the go button and the keyboard will go away and Google would load up. But there's a major flaw in the application, which is there's no back or forward button, as you see in most web browsers. It makes it very difficult to navigate. So let's fix that up. It's really simple to go back and forward, but it takes a bit of time, but not too long. Pretty much all you need to do is add a back and forward button and an action to correspond to when the back button's clicked and an action for when the forward button's clicked. From there, we do a detection to see if the web page can go back. For example, as soon as we load the application, obviously we can't go back any pages. And if you're on the current view, then you can't go forward at all. So we need to do a test for that. And then we just type web view, go back or go forward. So let's drag up our web view a little bit so we can fit a toolbar in again, and again drag in a toolbar. Leave the item, and let's just make the web view fit so it's right in between the two bars. Then we need to drag in another button, another bar button, which is next to the toolbar, and drag it in after the first item. Then also drag in one of these arrowy things. It's called a flexible width tool, pretty much, and essentially what it does is when you put it in between the two uh, items on your toolbar, it'll spread them out so they're both touching the edge. So let's do that. Put them in right in between the two bar buttons, and then let go. And as you can see, it spreads them out so that they're on either side of the screen. If you wanted them to be a certain distance apart that you could change, then do a fixed space width tool. And that's this thing here. As you'll notice, I actually can't rearrange them. So if I wanted this to be a few pixels out of this side of the screen, I need to do a fixed width. But this is useful for what we're doing. Let's change the first, the text of the first bar button item to be back, and the second to be forward. In another tutorial, I'll show you how to make this web browser look a bit better, and we'll add icons to the back and forward button rather than just having the text. Then we just need to hook up an action to either button. Well, both buttons. So click on the back button and right click and drag underneath the curly brackets in your .h file. Make sure you've got the assistant editor open. Make the connection an action and we'll call it back. Connect that up and then do the same for the forward button. Call this one forward. And make sure again that you've selected the connection to be an action. Connect. And then go into your view controller.m and let's start putting the code in to go forward and backwards. Inside our back, do square brackets, web view, go back. And then inside our forward method, type square bracket, web view, go forward. And it's that simple. Run the application now, and you should see the back and forward buttons working. So let's try clicking the back button when the web view opens. You'll notice nothing happens, and we might, for example, want to make the button disabled. So we need to do a test, and it's also good to eliminate the bugs. So, the test just needs to be if the web view can go back, then we want it to go back. So inside our back method, we need to just add an if statement. So type if web view, or in fact let's do a square bracket web view, can go back, close square bracket, equals equals yes, then copy this line of code, web view can go back, and cut it, and then paste it inside statements. And then we need to do the same for forward, but just change the line to if web view can go forward equals equals yes then web view go forward then on both methods after the closing curly bracket of the if statement type else open curly bracket press enter so that xcode adds in the closing curly bracket and just do ui alert view alert equals ui alert view alloc in it with title and then for title, say, oops, exclamation mark, message, this web page cannot go back. Delegate nil, cancel button, okay. 
and other buttons will just type nil. And then type alert show. We haven't really covered alert views before, so just copy that code, and in a later tutorial, I'll show you what all of that means. You could also set the delicate to self, and I think that might even be a better option, so we'll have a look into that afterwards. Copy all of this code from the beginning of the word else to the closing curly bracket, and paste it after the if statement in the forward method. But change the text so this web page cannot go forward. Let's run our application again. Let's try going back. As you'll see, you'll get the alert, oops, this web page cannot go back. And if we try going forward, we've got the same problem. But let's enter a URL and then try going back. Once you've entered your URL, click go, and as per always, the keyboard will slide down. And once the web page loads, if we click the back button, it goes back to Google. And if we click forward, it'll go back to the 99 cents page. And then if we try clicking it again, we get that error. So that's how we make a basic web browser. There's a few more things we could add, like a history, we could share the page, and I'll show you how to do these sort of features in a later tutorial. In our next part of this tutorial, though, we'll just make the web browser look a bit better, so you can actually present it to people. Thanks for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and if you have any questions, message us directly through YouTube, visit our website, 99centsupdevelopment.com, or our Facebook page, or comment on this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.